sound uh, is okay and you can all hear me okay it's nice to see you here even though we're still online but uh, better than nothing so yeah i'm going to talk about how children from different cultures growing up with different languages uh, learn to talk about the mind and how that ultimately also helps them to understand other people's minds which includes things like understanding other people's desires or beliefs and um, which might be different from children's own desires and beliefs and sometimes also different from reality. And um, to give you a, oh, an overview of what I'm planning to talk about today, so I'm first going to introduce you to children's sort of mind reading abilities and when they do develop during childhood and how we know that children actually understand how other people think and what other people believe. And then we're going to shortly talk about how this development of mind reading abilities is supported by language, different types of linguistic tools. And then um, we're going to look at three case studies where we looked at different types of, sort of linguistic tools, language uh, in different cultures or languages, and how those are related to children's mind reading abilities uh, to their understanding of other people's beliefs and desires. And we've uh, looked at English speaking children here, Mandarin, Chinese speaking children and Turkish speaking children compared some of them also doing the uh, similar kinds of tasks. And then I'll give you a short summary and, and conclusion. And as Daniel said already, we will also have uh, time for questions. And um, either you can ask them turning off your microphone at the end, or you can also put them in the chat while I'm talking. And then I'm going to have a look at them at the end, and I'm not sure whether I've actually provided my email address here, but I will do that in the chat as well. So you can also email me afterwards if you want to uh, ask further questions. So we'll, um, yeah, first look at, I'm not sure whether this has actually, sorry, whether my slides are moving. Um, should be okay now, sorry about that. So we'll first look at um, children's mind reading abilities and how we measure them and how and when they do develop. And I'm going to focus on one specific task um, of mind reading, and that's understanding other people's false beliefs. So beliefs that are sort of, uh, different from reality and that is one big milestone in children's understanding of other people's minds. And um, we do so-called false belief tests to check whether children understand other people's beliefs and perspectives. And we can also refer to these false belief tests as kind of litmus tests for children's understanding of other minds. So once they pass these tests, we kind of conclude that they have an understanding of other people's minds and that other people's beliefs can differ from reality. One of these false belief tasks or tests is the Salien or change of location task. And um, in this task, we just have a small story that we tell the uh, children and then um, often we would also act them out with some dolls and props and then ask them some sort of test questions at the very end. So we would have, for example, two little dolls, Sally and Anne. And Sally has a basket and Anne has a box. And I'm not sure whether the ending, yeah. Animation is working, it's working now. Um, and then Sally puts her ball into the basket. And then Sally goes out of the room and leaves Anne alone. And while Sally is away, Anne takes the ball out of the basket and puts it into her box. And then Sally returns 
And the test question we would now ask is where will Sally look for her ball? And you can try to answer that question yourself. Um, so the correct answer would be that she should be looking in the basket because that's where she's last seen the ball. That's where she put the ball. She doesn't know that the ball has been transferred to the box. So she should look into the basket if, and that's the correct answer, if you understand her perspective or current state of belief. Um, if you ask the same question um, to, or if you ask three and a half year olds, younger children, they will often say that she will look in the box because they don't yet understand that um, she doesn't know that the ball is uh, has been turned or no they sorry sorry about that um so they yeah don't understand that there's a difference between what they know um which is that the ball is in the box now and what sally knows and sally uh in, in fact doesn't know that the ball has been transferred so she should look in the basket but if you ask children around the age of three and a half they will give the wrong answer to that question um Another type of false belief test that we often do is unexpected contents. And here we would show children a container that should be very familiar to them. So with um, English speaking children in the UK, we would often have a Smarties container or like a box. You could also have something um, similar like a Pringles tube or something where every child should have an expectation of the contents or some other sweets. Um, and then we would ask them, what do you think is in this tube? And most children would say um, Smarties or some kinds of chocolate. And then we would open this uh, specific tube and show them that actually in now we've got some crayons in this Smarties tube, which should be unexpected. And then we put the um, crayons back into the tube and ask them whether they understand what um, this tube contains actually now. So what is in this tube now? Then we would ask, what did you first say was in the tube? And here again, children who understand um, false beliefs should say um, Smarties. But often again, if you ask three and a half year olds, they would say crayons which indicates that they don't distinguish what they know now and what they believed just um, a minute ago. So also indicating again that they don't really understand the difference between the current state of affairs and their own false belief. Um, and then you can also ask them what they would say about somebody else's belief. So what would your friend say is in this cube? And again, if they do have an understanding of uh, other people's beliefs, they should say Smarties or candy. Children who don't have this understanding of beliefs yet um, will say crayons. Um, so once children yeah, understand what other people think and believe, they uh, pass these tests. And in this case, they should say Smarties uh, in response to these test questions. And when we do these tasks, as I already said, around the age of four, typically developing children, hearing children, start to give you the correct answer to these test questions. So they show an understanding of other people's beliefs, especially when these beliefs differ from their own belief and also from the current state of affairs or from reality. And then interestingly, oh, um, sorry, this animation, here we go, I hope, yeah. Um, and if you do these tasks in sign language with deaf children growing up with deaf and signing parents, they show the same developmental pattern as hearing children. And interestingly, if you look at children, deaf children who grow up with hearing non-signing parents, they show a delayed development. 
So just to give you some quick background information, um, I think more than 90% of deaf children are born to hearing parents who don't often know a sign language, which means that they will use a spoken oral language, um, which then means that their children don't really yeah, can access that, that, that linguistic input. They grow up with a language that they can't really uh, process. Um, they might uh, learn a sign language later on in school or preschool, but they will have a period of time where they are not exposed to a language system that they can access properly. And that happens quite a lot for uh, deaf children. And um, if you test these deaf children without an exposure to language early in development, they also they show a delayed development also in these false belief tests, even when you do them in a less verbal manner or by using sign language. And this um, result can be seen as evidence that in some way there must be a relation between language or having access to a language and children's mind reading abilities. And um, where people, I mean, this is something that people agree on, where people disagree is um, how exactly um, language might support children's understanding of other people's minds or their mind reading abilities. And here, um, just to give you a quick overview before we actually look at some specific studies, um, some people argue and suggest that language in general supports understanding of false belief and mind reading. Um, and then other people are a bit more specific and would say that the use of, of mental verbs point to different beliefs and mental states. And mental verbs are things like thinking and knowing and believing. So there are some studies that indicate that um, when caregivers often use thinking, knowing, believing and verbs like that, that um, their children also develop an understanding of mental states quite quickly. So the more of these mental verbs they hear, the more quickly they uh, un develop an understanding of mental states in general, because these mental verbs um, sort of point to inner states, they point to different types of beliefs and desires. And yet others have suggested that it's not just mental verbs, but specific complex sentences that could help children to represent different beliefs about the same situation. So if we go back to Sally from that Sally Ann test, um, at the end of the story, we could sort of describe her belief as she doesn't know that it's in the box now. So we need to sort of use this type of complex sentence and end the mental verb in order to sort of describe her belief in the situation or her mental state. Um, and there are studies suggesting that once children are able to understand these quite complex sentences, they are also able to understand other people's mental states. So there seems to be a relation between that linguistic development and children's general understanding of other people's mental states, like beliefs and desires. Um, and what we were interested in, uh, in the series of studies is whether this actually applies to all languages and cultures, how different sort of languages um, express mental states, like the beliefs and desires, and whether sort of differences in how people talk about mental states also leads to differences in how children develop an understanding of mental states. And again, just as a reminder, it takes them about four years until they pass these false belief tests uh, and show a general understanding of other people's mental states. So in the first study that I'm going to show you, we looked at English children's understanding of um, complex 
sentences and mental verbs and how that relates to their more general understanding of people's mental states. And then we did a very, very similar study with um, Mandarin Chinese speaking children. And then um, we compared the two sets of results. And the English speaking children were tested very close by in Manchester. And to look at their understanding of um, specific mental verbs and complex sentences, we set, set up a sticker finding game, which is something that most children love to do, um, finding stickers. Um, so in this game, we had um, two boxes on a table and um, two hand puppets like a pig and a cow. And um, then you can see the child there and some uh, one adult or experimenter, and then the adult would tell the children that they and they have hidden a lot of stickers in these boxes and that the pig and the cow would help the child to find these uh, stickers. And um, in the first sort of setup, uh, first person condition, the two hand puppets would use sort of these mental verbs and complex sentences. Like, for example, I think the sticker is in the green box, the pig would say, and the cow would say, I know the sticker is in the yellow box. And again, you can ask yourself, I mean, if you understand something about these mental verbs, you would probably go for the yellow box here. Um, so that's what we expected the children to do if they uh, understood something about these mental verbs and how they are used in complex sentences. And then we also had a third person condition where the adult would speak for the um, puppets. So she would, for example, say the pig thinks the stickers in the green box, the cow knows the stickers in the yellow box. Again, if you do understand what these mental verbs mean, then you would also here go for the yellow box if you wanted to find the sticker. So that was kind of the yeah, expected outcome for those children who um, would understand the meaning of these verbs and sentences. And then we tested the same children with these um, false belief tests that I showed you in the very beginning to see um, how their understanding of these mental verbs and complex sentences relates to their more general mind reading abilities. And um, we did find a relation between the two. And I'm trying to break, I'm going to try to break this down for you um, so that it's not too complicated. So you can um, yeah, see here the, the how often the x-axis, how often they chose no over think. So the ability to yeah, understand these mental verbs. And then on the y-axis down here, you can see how many of those different false belief tests they passed. And you can see a sort of correlation between the two, um, especially children's understanding of the verbs know and think in a third person condition like the cow knows was positively related to their understanding of mental states and the false belief tests. I can say a bit more about the difference between I know and he knows uh, if you're interested at the end. But the take home message from uh, this really is that children's or English speaking children's understanding of mental verbs and complex sentences like the cow knows the stickers in the yellow box is positively related to their understanding of so yeah mental states in more general uh, tasks like these false belief tasks so there is a relationship between uh, language and their mind reading abilities and um, we were interested to see whether the same applies to a different language and culture. So we turn to Chinese. Um, sorry, I jumped ahead a bit. So this is just a first quick summary that mind reading in English, at least mind reading seems to be related to and supported by 
third person mental verbs and complex sentences like he knows that the sticker is in the yellow box. But yeah, turning to Chinese, um, there are two interesting differences when it comes to sort of mental state language and uh, false belief comparing English and Mandarin Chinese. So in English, um, caregivers or adults in general are very likely or they often talk about thinking or I think that, I believe that. So it's a very kind of subjective uh, type of language and culture. And compared to English, um, Chinese caregivers tend to talk more about knowing how to do things rather than what do you think how to do that. So we could, um, to put it simple, yeah, say that it's it's a more sort of egalitarian culture or it's more about sort of doing things the right way, knowing how to do, to do things rather than um, sort of talking about different types of perspectives. And you can see that in the language as well, that they are more likely to talk about knowing than to talk about thinking. Um, plus, unlike English, Mandarin Chinese has a verb that can explicitly signal that someone has a false belief. So the ver um, verb yi wei, sorry if I, I probably don't pronounce that correctly, um, that's why we, I did this with a, a Chinese collaborator, um, so I didn't do this study on my own. Um, but they have yeah, a verb that can explicitly signal that um, there is a false belief. So this verb can be translated as falsely think. That's a verb that we don't have in English um, or other languages. Um, so those are the two main differences between English and Mandarin Chinese when it comes to mental state language. Less talk about thinking, more talk about knowing. And the specific verb that can be translated as falsely think. So we did a very um, similar study with um, Chinese, Mandarin Chinese speaking, speaking children. Um, we used the same sticker finding game, the same setup. Um, the difference between the English and the Chinese study was just that here we now also used this um, specific verb that signals a false belief. So um, we contrasted no with think, but we also contrasted no with falsely think. So the kids would, for example, hear the cow knows the stickers in the yellow box, the pig falsely thinks the sticker is in the green box. And again, if you do understand the meaning of those verbs, you would go for the yellow box. And we then um, tested the same children with these uh, more general mind reading tasks and that I showed you in the beginning. Um, and here I'm not going to show you a detailed graph. So I hope you just believe me. Um, what we found here is um, the children who were good at understanding um, this falsely think verb and contrasted to uh, with no were the kids who also showed a general good understanding of other people's minds in these false belief tasks. Um, so in English, or for English again, just as a reminder, um, children's understanding of third person mental verbs like he knows and in, com in complex sentences was positively related to their general so mind reading abilities in Chinese. Um, on the other hand, it was this uh, their understanding of the specific false belief verb in complex sentences that was positively related to their false belief understanding. So we have, um, this indicates that sort of the way that different languages in code uh, refer to mental states can have an effect on how children then use those linguistic tools in order to learn something about mental states. And I think the time looks okay. So um, the last study looked at Turkish speaking children. 
And here we also again compared them to English speaking kids. And what is special about Turkish when we turn to mental state language, um, and which is also different from English, is that Turkish has so-called evidential markers that speakers use to mark how they know something. So it's similar to using mental verbs like I think and I know, but I'll show you some examples here. So they have these, yeah, sort of little markers that they, the so-called evidential markers that they put on verbs in order to indicate whether they have actually witnessed something. So again, um, this has been done with a collaborator who actually speaks Turkish, so excuse my pronunciation. So if they say babam eve gel di, and di is the crucial marker, it means um, I have witnessed that my father came home. And if they use the same sentence with the mish marker um, and put that at the end of the verb, the, then you would translate it as it appears that my father came home. And again, it's similar to sort of saying, I know my father came home or I think my father came home. The crucial difference here between English and Turkish is that in English we can um, sort of add I think or I know, but it's optional whether we add that information. In Turkish, this is not optional. So when you, um, in Turkish, when you talk about past events, you do have to indicate whether you actually know this or whether you are just sort of guessing that this is the case. And it could be, or the hypothesis here was that this obligatory use of evidential markers might make children aware of different mental states and then in turn also support their general sort of, again, mind reading abilities. So in this study, we compared English and Turkish speaking children's understanding of uh, false belief, again, the same tasks from the beginning. And we also tested their use of these evidential markers or mental verbs. Um, so either they witnessed a story and then were asked to retell it, so for Turkish, we then expected them to use this D marker, meaning sort of I know that this happened or I have witnessed that it happened. The English kids here were expected to say something like I know my father came home, again, use a mental verb, or just my father came home, which also sort of indicates a level of certainty. Um, and a different task, we ask them to of guess about what happened. Um, so they were expected to use the, this mish marker in Turkish, like it appears that my father came home or for the English kids, again, we expected them to use mental verbs like think, which indicates some type of guessing or I mean, actually the verb guess would be appropriate as well. And in this guessing game, so just to quickly illustrate how we did that, we would show them, for example, uh, some item like a cup, and then we would put the cup away. And then after five minutes, the, we would take the cup out again, but it would have changed state in some way. For example, it might have been broken. So here in this context, sort of the child would see the cup and then five minutes later, a broken cup, but um, the child importantly wouldn't know how this happened. So we would expect them to um, yeah, say something like, I think somebody has broken the cup. Or in the case of Turkish, they were expected to use this mish marker. And, to, and again, we then yeah, tested kids' general understanding of false beliefs and mental states and their use of these evidential markers or mental state verbs in English. And actually, children's use of evidential markers or mental verbs was not directly related to their understanding of false belief. But we did find that Turkish speaking children showed better false belief understanding than their English peers at the age of four years. So we use that as um, sort of evidence or an indicator that 
the presence and obligatory use of evidential markers in Turkish makes children aware of different knowledge states and beliefs and probably supports their sort of general mind reading abilities. Um, and yeah, it means that they understand sort of different minds a bit earlier than their English speaking peers because um, it's very present in their language whether somebody sort of actually knows something or whether somebody is just guessing. So to summarize the findings um, about false belief and language for English speaking children in Manchester, we found that their understanding of third person mental verbs and complex sentences, like he knows that the stickers in the yellow box um, is positively related to their general mind reading abilities for Chinese Mandarin Chinese speaking children, we found a more specific relation between specific false belief verbs like he falsely thinks that the stickers in the yellow box and their general mind reading abilities. And for Turkish, um, the results suggest that um, so of this uh, presence of evidential markers in, in the language helps children to develop false belief a little bit quicker than their English peers. And for a general summary, we can say that languages and cultures differ in how exactly they talk about the mind. And across cultures, children rely on different linguistic tools to represent and develop an understanding of mental states and beliefs. I think that is it. Um, so I've, yeah, we now have time for 